Hello YouTube, this is Nature Freak, and today uh, I'm just going to start us on a quick mini-series, if you will. I'm just going to do some quick tutorials on Hearts of Iron 4, just to uh, get you guys a good introduction. Uh, this is the newest version as of now, and I'm going to be talking into some of the most optimum stuff with setting up economy, and setting up uh, army, navy, and air force. So, uh, if you do enjoy this, and you do find this tutorial helpful, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, without any further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with a game as Italy. Uh, most people do tutorials as Germany, but there's a few extra things that you get exclusively when you start with Italy that I feel like it's good to go over. So... You enter a game, you get all these things that pop up right above you, right here. Now you're like, well, what the freak do all of these things do? So, uh, we're going to spend the tutorial, we're going to go through all of these tabs, and we're going to see what all of them do, and what you need to do to sort of satisfy what this notification is telling you to do. So, first one, research slot available. Since Italy is a major power, uh, you start off with four major slot or four research slots, and you can unlock one more right here in the focus tree. But the focus tree will be in a little bit. So now you've selected uh, your research tab. You have all of these things that you're researching. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory. Like under the tank thing, it researches tanks. Under the plane thing, it researches planes. So. We're going to go through, I'm going to go through a bit in depth of just what each of these little technologies do. And yeah, so here you have special forces. These are basically just your regular infantry, but better in some certain way. Mountaineers, they're better in mountainous regions. Paratroopers can be dropped from planes. And Marines are better in any wet environment. These enable you to have more special forces because you can only have special, for special forces as a percentage of your total army. Also, with uh, now here we have armored cars. This is something that came out in the newest DLC. Uh, these provide a sort of middle ground between your motorized and your actual armor, and they're very uh, they're I believe yeah they have lots of suppression. So you're probably going to want to put these in if you want to, or if you need good cavalry divisions or good garrison divisions. Sorry. Here you have your motorized. It's just a truck. Well, that, that's about it. Uh, here you have your mechanized, which is an upgraded motorized. It provides extra hardness, which means that infantry equipment won't do that much damage to it. Uh, these are Amtraks, which are basically mechanized, but they get better uh, bonuses to traveling across water and you know other uh, marshes and swamps and other t types of uh, that sort of terrain. Uh, and they just have less powerful stats. This is your infantry equipment line. Of course, the further up you go, the better the guns are. This provides just extra, these are just generic bonuses all around the board for your infantry. Except for these two, which boost heart attack and piercing, so they're better against tanks. In support companies, you have engineer companies, recon companies, military police, maintenance companies, field hospitals, logistics company, and signal company. What do all of these do? In a nutshell, these make your soldiers uh, better defenders. These do reconnaissance, give you better intelligence on the enemy. These provide a suppression bonus, so they're good for the, uh, garrisons. These uh, help you with tanks and keep them working and not just breaking down all the time. These help keep your soldiers alive, minimizing casualties. These uh, lower supply rate, so you're, you can fit more units into the same amount without having the same supply issues. And this one gives you what is called initiative. Yeah, it gives you initiative. And so with this one, it basically enables it to reinforce faster. On to reinforcing into the next video when we talk more about infantry and just combat in general. Armor. Uh, this side, light tanks. Light tanks are really good for taking on infantry. Not really good for much more. Heavy tanks, total other end of the spectrum. They're good for taking on armor, fortresses, 
you know, basically everything that's not infantry, and medium tanks are kind of the middle ground. Of course, these are the cheapest, these are, well, this is the most expensive one. And amphibious tanks, same principle with the Amtraks with the mechanized as these are with light tanks. Artillery. So artillery is something that is a must-have in your units. You, you always want your infantry to come with artillery. Uh, and in the artillery tab, there are three branches. You have your regular artillery, which provides, or I guess four branches. So regular artillery, uh, high amounts of soft attack, a little bit of hard attack. Anti-tank, which is high amounts of hard attack, a little bit of soft attack. Anti-air, which is a little bit of soft attack, a lot of air attack. So these... So this will help defend your units from planes. More on plane uh, specifics in, I guess, will be episode three. And then you have rocket artillery. Rocket artillery isn't used very much, and the biggest reason is because it la it does not have the defense and soft attack, or it has it does not have the defense, or you know it switches out the defense for breakthrough, and a little less hard attack than what you would typically be using, which is tier two artillery. Uh, people just go for tier 2 artillery just because it's better all around. If you're fighting just a better infantry army, this would be better. And then you have your doctrines. There are four paths you can go with for doctrines, and these just make your army better on whatever you want to guide your army around. Uh, if you want to be, ta be talking historical, mobile warfare is all about your tanks, and this is the sort of doctrine that Germany uses uh, in IRL World War II. They you know, heavy focus on tanks and mobility, being able to outmaneuver and disorganize the enemy. Superior firepower is a doctrine of kind of quantity or quality over quantity, where you have the best units possible that can just mow wave after wave after wave of enemies down, no matter what. Uh, this is pretty much equivalent to the United States during World War II. Uh, you know, there's different ways that you can take this, with uh, the end is basically a combined arms path, which combined arms path do you want? I think one is actually called combined arms. Yeah, combined arms. Um, so this is all about kind of merging your army with your air force here, and this is all about merging your army with your artillery here, and support companies in these two. Grand battle plan. This is kind of a like UK and Japan, as you can kind of see. They use Japan's area of expansion here. So this is planning. You get lots of planning, lots of defense. A little bit of breakthroughs and soft attack. You know, these are good all around. Lots of, or these are good uh, bonuses, but they aren't the best ones, so Grand Battle Plan isn't used very often. And then you have Mass Assault. Mass Assault is definitely the Soviet Union, and it is all about just cranking out as many units as possible and making those units do as much damage as they can before they end up getting replaced. Just like the Soviets did. Uh, this is when I kind of get to a little bit of question marks, because Navy meta is very questionable. Uh, into the base game, or with the base game right now, it seems that the meta is to just sort of spam uh, eight destroyers with a battleship and submarines. So you probably don't want to worry yourself with cruisers or carriers, unless you're doing a mod, that, or a total conversion mod, which makes it more balanced, where you will want to have a, you know, a balanced Navy. Uh, you know, in a nutshell, destroyers, they screen and protect. Uh, cruisers have two roles, depending upon how you outfit them, to either screen and protect or sort of act like smaller battleships and go and engage the enemy. Battleships, big guns go boom boom. Enough said. Carriers, uh, carriers carry airplanes into battle, and airplanes are pretty good. Uh, usually you, you want to have two battleships to a carrier, and most of the quote-unquote more historical mods that I've seen. Uh, submarines... Submarines are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, th these upgrade your different bits of gunnery and navy stats. Uh, you can have naval mines. This is... I believe this section here... Or not transports, but this bit and this bit is exclusive to man the guns. But I could just be thinking of how they do the DLCs wrong. And... Here we have the different naval doctrines. We have Fleet and Being, which is basically the United Kingdom, all about their battleships. You're gonna, I, I mean, these doctrines are basically the same, except for the last ones. I mean, yeah, look. Floating airfield, floating airfield. 
they're more or less the same, but you just get them in different orders. Trade introduction, definitely Nazi Germany. Uh, all about your submarines early on, and then sort of again get those same bonuses as the rest. Base strike, Japan and the United States. All about your aircraft carriers. Uh, you know, all about making your aircraft carriers a centerpiece of your navy instead of your battleships. Uh, with air, so what you typically so you have your fighters. They go around and they shoot other planes. Uh, close air support. Close air support goes and they you know bomb enemy troops or they can go out over sea and bomb ships. Naval bombers are more specialized close air support, but they are specifically utilized for bombing ships. They cannot be used to bomb uh, military targets. Tactical bombers are a longer range version of CAS, which can bomb both factories, troops, and uh, and ships. However, they can do this all with a little less efficiency than their more specialized counterparts. Heavy fighters are fighters that are specifically designed to shoot down strategic bombers and scout planes. Strategic bombers are very long-range planes that are designed to go over and destroy exclusively buildings. And scout planes fly over and provide intel over the enemy. And then once you unlock jet engines, you can unlock the jet version of the counterparts. Oops. Not there yet. And then we have air doctrine. So air doctrine is basically about, well, which uh, kind of bomber are you, are you using? Are you using close air support and naval bombers? Are you using tactical bombers? Or are you using strategic bombers? This strategic destruction is, of course, for strategic bombers. Battlefield support is all about your close air support. And operational integrity is all about your tactical bombers. Engineering. This tree gives you research speed and gives you these basic fire control systems make your navy better or give some navy upgrades radio gives you reinforce rate which we'll talk more about with the army tutorial and then these are your radar technologies this is atomic research so this is how where you can research nuclear bombs this is researching rockets for again those jet engines and getting better rockets in general this is your industry tab so this is just your production right here just base you know, higher production efficiency. Here you can choose to have better retention and higher cap, or more growth and higher cap. This con uh, gives conversion speed bonuses, so you can switch between military and civilian factories quicker. Construction, it builds stuff faster. What, what else do I need to say? Uh, excavation, you have a higher resource gain efficiency, so you'll be able to get more resources with what you have. Now here you have concentrated and dispersed industry. The difference between the two is concentrated industry is a higher buff to factory output and dockyard output. Whereas the dispersed industry is less of a flat out buff, but if you're going to be bombed, this means that your factories won't get bombed as quickly and you'll gain an additional bit of conversion speed. This is the synthetic oil area or synthetic oil branch of the tech tree, I should say. Uh, this is all about your fuel refining with your actual storage. You So you get more fuel gain per each of your oil and refinery just as you go down. And this enables you to build fuel, uh, fuel refineries, which provide you both with rubber and fuel. So very useful for major powers. And this just gives you more fuel from it, and this gives you more rubber from it. So what do I recommend you go with? The typical, uh, you know, for uh, research slot three is basic machine tools, construction one, electronic mechanical engineering, and support weapons one. That is what I highly recommend for anyone doing their first Hearts of Iron 4 game. So in terms of, of free civilian factories, what all can you build and what all should you prioritize? Infrastructure. It, you know, you build railroads. This helps increase supply limit in each of your countries. Air bases, it's an airport. What else do I need to say? Anti-air, this provides each of your provinces protection from airplanes. And then radi radar stations, which I don't have a launch right now at the base game. They're radar stations. These are military factories, which we'll get to in just a minute. These are civilian factories, which help you build things and also go, or a portion of them go to your consumer goods pool. These are naval dockyards, which will be building your navy, your synthetic refineries, your fuel silos, which store fuel, 
your rocket sites, your nuclear reactors, so you can uh, acquire uranium to make nuclear bombs. Naval base, there are places for your ship to go and repair and extend their range. Forts, their forts. And coastal forts defend your country from naval invasions in those provinces. What I highly recommend for just about every country in the game is you want to be building just civilian factories for a good couple of years. And make sure that you're building them in areas that have the highest infrastructure first. So then they'll be built the quickest there. So for example, I get an extra 70% bonus. That's the only one, so I'm going to do a 60% bonus right there. That'll be a good amount of civilian factories. Now, free military factories. Military factories build your equipment for war. So it will tell you if you are missing equipment, but uh, if you're playing as Italy, what you need is you need infantry equipment, support equipment, artillery, motorized, light tank, light tanks, close air support, uh, interwar fighters, naval bombers, and interwar bombers. If you don't want to do some reorganizing from the get-go, that is what all you'll have to build. And so, if you have at least one factory on each of these, it won't annoy you, and you'll also be replenishing these units as they die in battle, eventually. I recommend having at least five factories on infantry equipment at all times. This, No matter what your country is, you should try to have at least five factories on infantry equipment. I'm also recommending having about two factories on light tanks for every one of motorized, especially for most uh, light tank setups. Now I'm just going to put one on artillery and one on support equipment. <clears throat> so, dockyards. Dockyards build your navy, and as the game begins, I am flooded with ships that the game ha wants me to build. I'm going to go ahead and not do the ones that are that don't have any dockyards on them, but you can set this up to however you'd like. This also, this here tells you where these ships will deploy, so I can say you deploy to this fleet, you deploy to this fleet, and you deploy to, I don't know, this fleet. Whichever, whatever you'd like. I would recommend uh, putting most of your battleships in the same squadron. So that way they can pack more of a punch by working together as a single group and not, you know, alone and fragile and undefensible. Indefensible, sorry. <clears throat> national focus. What does this do? Uh, Italy doesn't have a very good national focus tree, but it gets the job done for the purposes of a tutorial. So the most widely taken focus tree or focus that you will take at the start of the game is just this one, Ethiopian War, War Logistics, which puts infrastructure and naval bases in Eritrea and Somaliland. Most of them take 70 days, but you will encounter ones that take 45 days. So, air wings with no mission or region assigned. What does this mean? This just means I have an air wing here, they don't have any orders, they're just waiting there. In the room. So, we could just right-click that, and we could ignore it. No divisions and basic training. As Italy, you don't really need to worry about divisions until after you finish your war with Ethiopia, so we're going to go ahead and ignore that too. Now we have unassigned divisions. What does this mean? It means that we have a division here, well, all of our divisions really, but say this division right here, it doesn't have any, it's not assigned to an army, it doesn't have any generals, it's just kind of sitting here. So the way that I usually organize this at the beginning of the game is I usually take all of these divisions at the board with Ethiopia, put them into one army. We'll go ahead and put them under Ubaldo uh, Soru in order to get him more experience through the war. We're going to go ahead and draw a battle plan by just clicking onto the army, clicking offensive line, then right clicking and dragging. Then I also take a, make a second army, grabbing those two divisions in Ethiopia, or not Ethiopia, Libya, and then holding shift while I drag a box and grab the rest here. I'll go ahead and put Visconti Prasca here. Same thing. Uh, left click for the front line to put it on, and then left click again to put it on the border, on the entire border. You can right click and drag if you really want it on a select section if you're doing, say, multiple units there. 
And then the rest of these units, all 19 of them, I'm going to put them in a separate army. I'm going to put this under Giovanni Messe, because this is going to be just a regular army. And I usually put them onto the border of Yugoslavia, because I like to take Yugoslavia early whenever I play Italy. So, we are at war. We are at war with Ethiopia. This isn't going to be much of a fair fight, but we are at war with Ethiopia. Really, what you can do is, once you have this set up here, make sure that you select your air force, turn on air superiority, which will automatically do it for your fighters, turn on close air support, which will automatically do it for your close air support and your tactical bombers, and turn on strategic bombing, which will just turn on for your tactical bombers. You can right-click to tell them to do the, that mission over East Africa. And then they'll do each of those missions in East Africa. So, insufficient resources. This means that I'm low on certain resources, and so I either need to get countries that have it or trade for it. What I'm going to do from the very beginning is I'm going to trade one civilian factory for eight of every resource, do one from Siam for rubber, and then another of chromium from Turkey. And that will fix that, so I can go ahead and right-click it. I don't mind being one short on tungsten. So, not enough garrisons or manpower to fulfill our garrisons. I am short 224 infantry equipment. If I go under here, I can select Occupied Territories by clicking our little flag here. If I click on that, it will tell you our garrison template, tell you how much of this garrison here is here to quell resistance, and what your... Uh, what do you say? This is our territory management... Our... our territory management law we'll say that so if you click it up here it'll change the default law which changes it to that one for all of these or you can change it per each different uh, state so right now as we are producing you know 22 guns a day that's not going to be too much of an issue so I can go ahead and right click that and all of a sudden we just have the little we are at war tab our industry has been set up with our military factories and with our dockyards, and we have set up our civilian factories to keep our nine busy until 1938. This has been part one of our Hearts Round 4 tutorial. I'll hope to see you for part two coming up.